Hey, what's going on guys? Come back in here. In this video, we're going to learn how to create a data frame with a custom schema in PySpark. So, the previous video, uh, we did learn how to load the CSV data uh, and how to make a data frame out of it. But the problem there was that all, all of the data cells were the type of string. However, uh, in this particular case, it's like we have the latitude, the longitude, and even some boolean values here like the commission here so for instance if we want to interact with a uh, similar with the sql table for instance that does does have exactly the same fields in that case it's, it would be definitely needed to have this kind of type data and uh, this so-called schema in PySpark actually allows you doing so so in this video we'll have a look how to uh, explicitly specify the data types for every given cell. So we'll start by uh, simply loading the data from CSV and then we'll see how it works. So without further ado, let's actually start. And the very first thing I want to say here is to let import PySpark as a module. So I want to import findSpark and then say findSpark dot in it and the path where my PySpark has been installed it's in opt.spark it might be a different location for you then uh, from uh, then we want to import some packages here so from PySpark.sql I want to import spark session spark session right okay and probably instead of uh, add in some specific headers to, to to make a schema probably first let's create spark session all right so spark equals to spark session dot builder dot master uh, i'm running this locally uh, with one partition uh, app name is gonna be let's call it schemas right and get or create so we're going to be creating this from scratch so it would actually create not get all right um and now uh well let's load uh load csv load csv file uh so data frame equals to spark dot read dot csv and here is my file so resources and zip codes dot csv so resources zip codes dot csv and df dot print schema and we can actually show it it's not essential but yeah let's let's show that and here to run the script i say python 3 uh, schema schema the pie all right so uh, now the next step by the time it's loading just a few words on what are we going to be doing so currently uh, it would take all uh, all this data but all the column types would be the all the type all the data types within uh, like per each column would be the type of string however it's not what we want to have there so for instance we want the integer time for it for a record number uh we want uh integer for zip code uh a zip code type this would be string this would be string this also string so latitude longitude would be double type and so on and so on so we'll now go step by step through all of the columns to to give you an idea how how this can be done basically and yeah so here is here is the data set and just like i've mentioned you see like all all the column names that we have here they all are the type of strings so now let's create a custom schema in order to do that i need simply to say uh, from by spark dot sql dot types uh, i want to import struct type and then also well actually it's a bit better to make it from the new line so here uh, the types I want to import so I want to import the string type S string type uh, integer type double type and 
boolean type. Okay, now let's start um, uh, defining our schema. So define schema. Uh, it's better, even better to say data types schema. So just call it schema here and struct type. And now just to please uh, please the how the code looks like we can use this backslash and then say dot add and now it's very simple we need to take uh, the name of so the record number in this case for instance so I'm taking the record number record number and the type is gonna be integer integer type like this and it's already it's fairly enough to to give you an idea how this works. And now uh, here uh, we're going to be creating the data frame, uh, the data frame with with, uh, with a custom schema. So uh, here the format, so the definition is a little bit different. So format is going to be CSV. Then here we want to say load. And here in between we just add the schema and our schema is going to be this one. Okay. And yeah, this should actually be enough to work. So let's try to run this again. And now it should only print the only column, uh, the record number, the type, uh, the integer type. And this should be, uh, yeah, like uh, the only column available in the data frame. That's important. So let's see if it works, and if it does, then we can go for the rest of... Yeah, we, we got this record number integer, so far so good. It's exactly what we're looking for. And now it should, yeah, just one column, so as expected. So now uh, it's like pretty similar data frame to what we had before, but just only contains one, uh, one column here. But the type is integer, which is important. So for instance, if now we're going to be using this uh, along with the SQL database, for instance, then this type really matters. All right, so now from now on, we're going to start adding columns one by one in an extremely simple way. So all we need to do uh, is the following. So zip code, for instance, I just can copy this one. And here I have the zip code, okay then zip code type and this is going to be string already uh, so add zip code type and string type all right and yeah by the way yeah here we need to use all those backslashes because otherwise it just would be given the uh, syntax error right so Okay, then CD. So CD is going to be string. All right. Also string type. Okay. Uh, state. Okay. Also string type. So most most are are string types, but yeah. State location type. Also string. Uh, location type. Now latitude and longitude, so let and long. Okay, so let latitude and this is gonna be double type. Double type and longitude is gonna be double type as well. Uh, X, A, C, X, A, uh, X axis and Y axis and Z axis all gonna be double type okay so x axis y axis i hope i don't make any typos uh, and z axis right and all oh, they should be double type double Double, double. Okay, um, then world region, world region should be string. Uh, 
Okay, world region. Uh, we can drop if we don't if if we don't want some columns, we can just not add in them. Uh, so I probably I'm not gonna be go, I'm not I don't want to go for all of them. Let's just say uh, let's just give them location text and decommissioned. Yeah, that should be enough. So location text is which is string. location text string type and <clears throat> decommissioned uh, I'm not sure if I can spell it properly okay uh, this decommissioned is gonna be the boolean type okay and this should be fairly enough to have the type data frame, uh, so well, uh, it's it's typed anyway. But in this case, we do we do specify this uh, the types for every column uh, in separate. <coughs> so let's have a look if it works. If I didn't make any typos, then it should actually. Okay, found duplicate columns in the data schema world region. Uh, okay, yeah, just really duplication there, so don't need that. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. It handles uh, the errors automatically. It's really nice. Yeah, it's a bit of a downside. It just loads a little bit too long, but yeah. Assuming the amount of data this framework is capable of handling, it should be okay. Okay. And you're not gonna, again, you're not definitely gonna be torturing this in production like uh, hundreds of times like I do during debugging here. Okay, so here is our data set. I'm just wondering if I. Uh, yeah, it's still. Uh, yeah, the terminal width is still too narrow. But anyway, we have this record number is type of integer, zip code integer, uh, zip code type, strain, city, strain, state, strain, location, strain, latitude, axis, uh, all those doubles, world, uh, region, strain, location, strain, and decommission is Boolean, which is exactly what we want. So yeah, now uh, we've just managed to make a data frame, a data frame with a, a custom custom schema for types for each column and by the way yeah the same thing uh, can be done for JSON as well so this this sort of a schema is applicable to whatever data it's, uh, it's regardless of the data source we're using so yeah this is it from my side thanks for watching until the next time and take care